subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel it's been on the market now for about three years and in this video i thought we would cover like my three years later experience with the device the iphone 6s at the time might have felt like a boring update, but it brought some crucial improvements to the iPhone experience that actually is a part of the core experience today, even in your more current iPhone. So in this video, I aim to help you decide if maybe it's still worth it, or maybe it's just a little bit too old and dated these days. Anyway, let's get into it. So the iPhone 6s featured a 4.7 inch retina display, 326 pixels per inch. This phone came with a 4K camera on the rear, 12 megapixels, which was the first 4K camera, I believe, for an iPhone. This phone had two gigabytes of RAM and the CPU was a big improvement for the iPhone series, the A9, which still runs very smooth today. 1715 milliamp hour battery on this guy, so not the biggest battery, but for the size of the phone, not too bad. And finally, iOS 11 is now on board with this phone and it will be upgradable to iOS 12. And if any history of Apple is any indicator of software, the iPhone 6S should still be updated to the next version of iOS as well. So discussing the design of the iPhone 6S, on the front, it's basically classic iPhone. There's not much different from this in an iPhone 8, but this design is definitely not gonna be seen in the newer iPhones. The rear of the phone was pretty similar, if not identical to the iPhone 6, so nothing really changed up too much in that aspect. Three years later, using the iPhone 6S, we can still attest to how thin this phone is. At 7.1 millimeters thin, this phone is still extremely thin in comparison to many other phones out there. The antenna lines on both the top and the bottom of the iPhone 6 have always been kind of an eyesore for me. Maybe not some others, but I never really liked the antenna lines personally. And the clicky home button. Yes, no capacitive home button here on the 6S. It's just your standard clicky home button on this device. And this phone, by today's standards, has big bottom and top bezels. But the trade-off is that you get a flat 16 by 9 display. Overall, the iPhone 6S design has definitely been improved over the past three years, specifically to just kind of a few exterior changes, like removing the antenna lines, bringing glass to the iPhone 8. On the whole, though, pulling out an iPhone 6 today, you cannot really tell if it's a 7 or an 8. So this design has held up very well over the past three years. On the note of durability, the iPhone 6S is susceptible to, you know, cracking if you do drop it. So its display quality is not super high when it comes to damage, but at the same time, it's not super weak either. Like you could place it on a table a hundred times. It's not going to really mess it up. But if you do drop it from high, there's going to be some impact damage. One area that was improved with the iPhone 6S was its bending abilities. Well, the lack thereof of bending because the iPhone 6, you can basically snap in your hand as we all know so over time you know this has made the phone feel very durable in the hands just a strong little iphone in the iphone success the quality of the headphone jack i did see some issues with some of my other iphones in the past but the iphone success headphone jack actually held up very well and i got no distortion or crackling in the earpiece the quality of the speaker however has been rather tinny but we'll talk more about that in audio um, it hasn't, you know, gotten wet or anything like that, so it sounds just like it did day one, but it's not super loud, but we'll talk more about that in the audio. And discussing the quality of all the buttons on the 6S, they've all held up very well. I know people have had issues with home buttons maybe getting stuck, but if you get food or some, like, water in between there, of course that thing's gonna get stuck. And then, you know, the other buttons, they just feel basically like every other iPhone, sturdy, reliable, and solid. I just don't recommend using an iPhone 6S without a case or a skin for that, because if you do drop it on the face, it's over with for the success. Discussing the current software version, iOS 11.4.1 is on board, and there's no real difference between the past few iterations of iOS are, that are huge. I mean, it's still a grid of icons. It still has, you know, the same basic user interface that we're all come accustomed to. The main thing that changed really in iOS 11 was the control center. Yes, there are some new features buried in the settings, but Overall, iOS, generally speaking, is about the same. And iOS 12 is not doing a lot to change the icons and, you know, just the visual looks of it. So it will be much faster, 
but the iOS 11 on the iPhone 6s has run very smooth for being, you know, the third time, I believe it is second or third time they've updated the software on this phone. Overall, software is a win for the success just because it's an older phone, like three years already, and it's still getting updated. So that's always a win when an older phone continues to get an update. Moving on to the topic of performance. Over the three years using this, the A9 has held up. What a processor Apple created with this device because this A9 still can run basically everything today very easily with virtually no lag. Yes, the iPhone 6S is not as snappy, not as fast as an iPhone 8 or a 10, but you you would be hard pressed to notice any slowdown or real slowdown in your day-to-day -day use, even here in 2018 on a 6S or a 6S Plus. And that's basically my thoughts for the performance here. Now, gaming on the other hand, some apps did crash on gaming. I'm not gonna lie to you with iOS 11, some things seem to be not working quite as well as they used to. But once you download some games that actually are optimized well for the success, it loads them pretty quickly and it plays them just fine. I just noticed that this phone gets a little bit hot. On the topic of display, the iPhone 6S, like mentioned earlier, 4.7 inch LCD retina display with 326 pixels per inch. Now the only area where you really notice this is if you get really close on a display, you'll see that it's not quite as sharp as like a 2K display or anything like that, 65.6-ish screen to body ratio. So it's not gonna be you know, your super narrow display, but it does offer up some pretty good video watching because it has the way video was meant to be in 16 by nine. So on the whole, it has pretty decent viewing angles. It's pretty bright. However, I did have some trouble in the brightest of sunlight seeing this phone outside, but overall display has been good. I don't think it's great, but it's a good display. I also should mention that the iPhone 6S was the first display on an iPhone to bring 3D touch, which is a feature that is on all iPhones today. So like I said earlier, the 6S brought features that are a part of the core experience today, one of them being the 3D touch. Discussing the camera, this was the first iPhone to bring 4K to the camera section. This was big because 4K just makes your video much better. Also, 12 megapixel on the rear, f2.2 aperture. So it's not the best aperture for low light, but you know, with all the software processing Apple does, most photos do turn out pretty decent, although you will get some noise at nighttime with this phone. On the front, you have a five megapixel camera. This is also f2.2 aperture, can shoot up to 1080p video recording and in terms of the software it's basically the software you see on any current iphone as well you swipe through to get your panel square you know all the modes and live photos was new here for the iphone 6s as well so this phone brought some great camera improvements to the iphone experience but i'm not going to talk too much more about the camera experience. Take a look at some of my samples and decide here if maybe this phone might still have a good enough camera for you.
M6S video. You can see audio coming directly from the phone itself. Not bad still. Here's some front-facing video of the iPhone 6S. Again, audio coming directly from the phone itself. You can kind of see how it does with exposure. Right here, not bad overall. All right, so here's some front-facing video. While moving, you can kind of see how it handles that front-facing video on the bike again. Should not be too bad. I got a pretty steady hand, but overall, here's what you're gonna get on a nice sunny day with the iPhone 6 in movement. 6S, excuse me in movement this is the audio on the topic of battery life the battery life for the iphone 6s 17 15 milliamp hour battery and to be quite honest with you this phone i had to have in the low power mode to get all the way through the day now i'm not saying it's a bad battery life but always on the smaller iphones you're not getting much more than a day you're going to get through most of your day but you're hitting the charger around 7 p.m 6 p.m on the iPhone 6s if you're a moderate to heavy user. So definitely you wanna to go towards the 6s plus if you were looking for battery three years ago. But overall, yes, it's down to 83% for me, so I will be needing to get this battery replaced. But on the whole, battery again, just like I said with the display section, it's not great, but it's pretty good. Now discussing the audio of the 6s, yes, we have a headphone jack and yes, we have a speaker at the bottom, but only one speaker. This is not the iPhone that brought the dual speaker setup. So this one, pretty tinny and easy to cover up. One of the biggest weaknesses of the iPhone 6s. However, one of the biggest strengths is what no longer any iPhone offers and that's being able to plug in a proper headphone jack. So it's a 50-50 here, just like with the new iPhones, it's a 50-50. You get great external audio, but no longer a headphone jack. So Apple really wants to push those AirPods on its customers and it's pretty much succeeded at that as I haven't found AirPods at a lot of stores are sold out pretty much every time there's a holiday season. So the iPhone success 50-50 when it comes to the audio performance. Briefly touching over the calling experience hasn't been bad at all for the 6S. I don't think it has the loudest earpiece and the loudest, you know, voices that I hear on the other end, no HD, super crisp, super loud voice like that, but it worked okay for a phone and I didn't have too much reception issues here. So I, I would give it a thumbs up for the phone calling. Okay, so let me talk about some things that I like now about using the 6S on the day-to-day. -day. Number one, putting the phone in your pocket, no problem, super light, Super easy to do this, so a very pocketable smartphone with a decent sized screen, not too small like some other phones out there. You know what I'm talking about. Number two, the ease of using this phone with one hand. It's really rare to find a new smartphone that you can whip out with one hand and one thumb that baby. This one is, I think, one that many could definitely one hand is the iPhone 6S. Number three, the weight of this phone. Weighing in at under 150 grams, this thing is light. So basically weighs nothing. It's so light that sometimes you might not even feel it in your pocket. Number four, the performance. The flat 16 by nine panel is something that's going away. It's gonna become archaic in a few years, although that is the way video is meant to be, but I think we're gonna see narrow displays on all smartphones going forward. Things I don't like, the antenna lines. They're just ugly. I just don't like the antenna lines on the iPhone 6S, never did. The huge bezels. Yes, I know flat display was one of my pros, but having huge bezels is not one of my pros. I don't like having very massive bezels. And on the white model, they look even bigger because they don't blend with the black display. The clicky home button feels rather old in comparison to capacitive home button. And battery life has improved significantly on newer iPhones, making the iPhone 6S a pretty disappointing battery performer. So in conclusion, the iPhone 6S, is it worth it? Well, in terms of the pricing, you have pretty good options here to get this phone at under $300 now. So I think it has a stellar experience for paying under $300 even here right now in 2018. This could be a great side phone if you're an Apple developer developing apps and you just need to use this phone to develop some apps. This could be a great phone for that. It could be great for somebody who wants to get into their first iPhone, doesn't want a tiny SE, doesn't want a super premium iPhone 10. They don't want an old iPhone 5S. They want something right in the middle of all of those. The 6S can be great for you. So yes, thumbs up. Apple did a great job with the iPhone 6S. What are your thoughts on the iPhone 6S? Go ahead and drop Drop them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, click that like button for me. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you all in the next episode. And peace.